Hello, and welcome to Footsore Vox. I'm your host, Tim Spakowski. Today, I'm with Glenn Kapheim. We're both from Footsore North America. Hi, Glenn. Hey, Tim. How you doing? I'm great. It's uh, the, the weather here is shorts weather. It's 44 degrees here in St. Louis. Rainy. This is my. This is when I bog down in my hobbit hole, and I have to be pried out of it to get to get out of it. So it's beautiful weather here. Yeah, I got 61 here, blue sky. Yep. It's amazing. I'll be hitting the beach later. Oh, <laughs> well, bastard! The best I wish I could. I wish I could say that. Um, the only beaches that I'm going to be hitting are uh, uh, little terrain pieces that I'm kind of working on. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Uh, so today we wanted to take this time to talk about the new pack from Footsore Modern, and that is the British SBS in Syria. Now. We can you can use this pack for any area, and it actually doesn't have to be SBS. So why did we choose SBS? And for those who uh, aren't aware of what SBS is, is British Special Boat Squadron. Uh, well, you want to talk a little bit about the SBS? Right. So um, we saw that a lot of um, figures have been done, just mainly saying British SAS, right, Special Air Service. So um, so the British SBS, now the British Special Boat Service, right? They went from squadron to service because they mm -hmm. got bigger, right? Um, we had really titled. Now, is the equipment the same? Sure. Did they look the same? Probably yes. But we, we wanted to identify them. We saw some cool pictures of them in Syria that are unfortunately not on the net no more. And uh, so we, I guess we just really just wanted to give a shout out to them and, and do all the different types of equipment. You know mm -hmm. that you can see right there so i mean we'll talk about the equipment soon but yeah it's really just to do an extra modern you know ultra modern uh, sbs you know slash sas unit uh and like you said it could be you could turn it into anybody you wanted yeah and you know over the years <laughs> we've yeah. had requests for uh operators and ball caps and beards so we, we thought it'd be a great opportunity to do that for this pack as you know yeah for this pack yeah for this pack and then in addition to the pack that has the figure with the ball cap on we're also providing helmets with them as well yeah very cool helmets yeah yeah, yeah. five five figures in this pack right right and then five uh, yeah figures, a dog five, yep yep it's a nice pack you know we we design packs that we ourselves as gamers want and so we do our best to think about okay how can this pack be utilized? What's the best you know, option for this pack? And uh, Glenn was the one really to come up with the idea of having you know, alternate heads. So you, you have the, uh, the ability to swap out heads. Really easy. You know, so, and I'm sure it, people, I see some people asking questions, how do you do that? Uh, and there are no stupid questions. So what well, I normally do is, no, not at all. That's the problem. So I just you know, cut them off at the, at the neck level. Sometimes I, I drill on the bottom of the head and, and drill at the bottom and make a pin and just glue it in. Sometimes by the luck of God, it, it goes on real smooth that, you know, and I don't have to do any of the, the pin vicing or anything like that. And of course they use uh, super glue. Yeah. So, and the sculptor Stavros, yeah, he made the necks long enough where you got some wiggle room to cut it, the length you want, the angle and glue it right. back on the helmet, fill it back in with some magic sculpt or whatever you use. If we have to do the tutorial on it, we can do that. Yeah, and, and you know, to that, a lot of people ask me, what kind of super glue do I use? I use cheap super glue that I could get at Target or Walmart. You know, I mean, I buy a pack. Hey, that is the best. That's all That's, I get. Yeah, you know, yeah. whenever I go to Target, I grab two packs, and I swear I probably have more super glue back in the studio than Target itself has in its stock. It's just something that you have to have. And I'm, I'm sure I have at least five or six of these tubes around the, the, the table and stuff, and especially back there. So, yeah, it's just best. It's I just agree. cheap, cheap super glue. And I also use Zip Kicker for an accelerant if I feel like I, if, if it's not um, drying fast enough, uh, I just use that. So, that's just a trip, uh, a trick that I do. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Let's talk from top down then. Okay. Let's talk about the 
ball cap. What what's on the actual figure itself from the ball cap perspective? Just okay. So uh, starting up from the top, our guys got of course a baseball cap. You can paint that any way you want. You can put any flag on it you want. You can leave it plain. You can put a North Face emblem on them. Whatever you want to do. Okay, your British, you your Union Jack flag. You know whatever. But we wanted them in baseball caps, and um, we left one out with no baseball cap. Our team leader, right? right. He's got the raggedy hair. Uh, you know, he's got a beard, he's got his shades on, he's the running action guy, my favorite figure. Um, you know, so all of them got baseball cats except one. And I think most of them, some got glasses on, you know, some Oakley's on, some don't, some got it on the top of the hat, you know, more relaxed. I think our troop boss has got his more relaxed. Yeah. You know, because he's kind of not in the action pose, you know. Yeah. And then, the, you know, so if the guy wants to use the helmet, well, you know, it's a typical you know, um, off-score helmet that everybody wears, uh, you know, and it's got all the, the gadgets and gadgets on it and the, the Velcro, the, you know, the things that everybody want. You know, it's got the right night vision nods and it's got the the pack in the back, you know, to balance the helmet out with because of the night vision. So, um, you know, so heavy. It yeah. has that on there. So they look great. And they all have beards and different faces on them. Yeah. You know, you mentioned patches. We make decals we we offer decals that are perfect for the ball caps and the helmets uh, and a couple of the other f photos i've taken and shown especially units of the grom i had the uh, the skull the predator skull on the front or on the back on the sides you know even on the back of uh, their their gear so the, the the decals work great so yeah absolutely okay so top down so let's talk about their uh, combat shirt. Okay, so we know the typical cry precision combat shirt, you know, that costs about what freaking two hundred dollars, <laughs> right? So you always see the seals with them cut off, you know, the tier one units with them cut off at the sleeve because you know they got just crazy money. Brits, I don't think they got crazy money. I looked forever because I wanted to do a shirt like that. Couldn't find one with it whacked off because I just don't think they go that route. Right. Ruined under two hundred dollar stuff. Yeah. So. We mixed it up, right? So we got a couple of guys with combat shirts rolled up, you know, and they got the combat watch. They got their little big Gucci expensive watch on, and, you know, they got the quarterback panel on, you know, so they can look at their call signs or whatever, um, targets, whatever, you know, the reporting. And uh, we got one guy. So we got two guys with um, cry precision combat shirts. We got one guy with just a T-shirt, probably like a black or green athletic T-shirt. And my favorite, the team leader, rocking his Helly Hansen, you know, long sleeve athletic shirt. If you look at if you're looking at the miniatures, he's the guy pointing, and it looks like maybe he's just like muscled up, but he's actually got a shirt on. Mm -hmm. So the way to paint that would be like a dark. I'm going to paint mine like dark blue with those diagonal stripes that go down the back of it, mm -hmm. like you saw a lot in Afghanistan. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned Helly Hansen. The the first time you know I had really read about Helly Hansen gear being used was uh, the first Gulf War in the SAS. I think it was one of Andy McNabb's books. It was. And, yes. You know, that, right. I need to get some uh, Helly Hansen now. And then I think it was the other one I remember talking about. I think it was D Squadron. It was about Bosnia, the SAS in Bosnia. So they talk a lot about that. So a lot of this stuff is their ode, odes to the hist you know, the past. That's right. Right, of units past. Uh which we're, we'll go back and talk about the, one of the coolest things later. Let's talk about their web gear. Okay, so they're wearing, they're all wearing the, you know, the extra expensive cry precision um, jumpable plate carrier. Uh, it could be, and, and of course at that scale, it can be any plate carrier you want. Yeah. Right. I mean, no one's going to know, but at that scale, but that's what that's the, what we're trying to convey. And then what's cool about it, so they all have, I think just about all of them have the abdomen, lower abdomen pouch, right? I so we put that on so. there. Yeah. yeah, a lot of guys would carry their medical kit in there or their go-to stuff to get to. And then the back of it, they all have the Emerson pouches on it, right? Mm -hmm. And they make about three different styles. And we put all different styles of those Emerson pouches uh, on the back of the uh, plate carriers. And mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. It'll give each guy some individuality. Reminds me, I need to call up my friend, my buddy John, who owns SOE Gear, and see if uh, he can give us some ideas uh, of gear and stuff. Also, that we could be using. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pants. Are these, what kind of pants are these? Um, all these pants are your typical cry precision, expensive as hell pants, you know, the combat pants. But you should be able to paint these figures and these pants in different colors. Like mine, I'm going to split them up between some are going to have multicam and some are going to have ATAC. Because there's that one picture that, that was done that was, you know, SBS, and he's wearing either solid green or ATAC pants. And I think he's got a rolled up DPM pattern top. It's hard to tell. Right. But That's I would right. like to paint one like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sky's the limit on what you want to do. All the pants are the same, though. Yeah, I, I'm, I personally am looking forward to painting the DPM. <laughs> it's a break from uh, the multicam. And uh, for those who know Dougie Robinson, who's, he's done a lot of 20 millimeter painting. Uh, he's also doing a lot of 28 millimeter paints. He's got a really good tutorial on uh, painting DPM, which I took his color recipe, I think for the most part. And uh, it's very good. And I've yeah, got we might have to link that because we got the one guy with the special forces smock on, the troop boss. That's right. So, I, you know, that would be good. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned ATAC. We see that a lot. So uh, I'll be painting some. In, and ATAC's, in my opinion, the, the easiest, one of the oh, easiest definitely. camos to paint, which uh, my, my goal is when I have time is to do a video. I've been asked for ATAC. I've been asked for Tiger Stripes, which is still working on. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have that. And, and I can also do a DPM video. Really, the DPM video is the same kind of pattern well uh same kind of technique that i used for the u.s woodland video that i did different colors though uh the the tan is a little bit yellower and the uh, brown's a little bit more burgundy yes and the most important thing is the the black yeah swirl. the black lines yeah totally. gotta get that you have to do that black swirl properly yeah, <laughs> if yeah. you don't then you know, it's going to look like u.s woodland so those beautiful nuances is what uh, makes there makes a difference between DPM and U.S. Woodland, and uh, I have plenty of Paris mocks here uh, that I can use for modeling. Uh, from did you get for, yours? Did you get your SAS smock from Silverman's? I got my SAS smock at Silverman's. I yeah, also I also got my Brit Paris DPM smock in Deborah's and Aldershot, uh, where I got a lot of other gear uh, from there. The a Soldier 95 Assault Vest. Uh, uh, let's see. Chest rigs. Arctis chest rig. Arctis, uh, yeah. You know. That was all the rage a long time ago. Yeah. It's, it is, it's funny that the Silverman's is still around. DeBoer's is still around for a little, you know, far, you know. They, they are still there in, in older shot, at least that I know of last. Uh, there was, speaking of all of uh, DeBoer's, there was a guy on YouTube did a post a video on his visit to DeBoer's on YouTube and it's cool. I highly recommend you check it out. If I think about it, I'll post it a link here, uh, but it's just a neat piece of uh, history from a surplus store that's been around for a very long time sure. that has um, original uh, pattern 37 web gear, Brit pair of smocks, all this, all the cool stuff. So I know we're digressing from the SBS. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. No but worries. But you know what? That's just part of it. So okay, let's talk about the the weapons. What yeah, are we the here? weapon. All right. So they use uh, a weapon very similar to the U.S. Army, right? So they use it, in, you know, like RM4, except theirs is made by Colt Canada, right? So it's the L, I think, like one one nine Alpha two Colt Canadian, I so. mm -hmm. right? Right. So they use that. Um, you know, fantastic weapon. They didn't go with the HK like everybody else did. Uh, I'm hearing that, um, you know, our guys over here are switching out of the HK. Like, so Colt makes, for the U.S. Army, Colt makes the their assault rifle, right? Their M4. But, mm -hmm. like, uh, so all units from SOCOM, Daniel Defense make it, the Mark 18. They make it for, like, the Ranger Battalion and the Green Berets and SEALs. And then the Tier 1 units are using, you know, the HK-416. But I'm, I'm hearing that the Army... Green team is going to be switching out of that from the 416 and go into something else. Who knows, though? Yeah. Who knows? It all looks the same in that scale, though, right? Right. The, the big thing is the stock, you know, yeah. having the correct stock. Uh, and then all the nice uh, 
tools on top, you know, the, the sites and, and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. So they had the the micro aim point mm -hmm. on ours, and uh, the Pack 15 on the front, and the the shorty suppressor, and the Surefire light. I mean, the typical, you know, what you see on all weapons. But what's interesting though, as I was reading that article on the guy's weapon setup, you know, the lone operator in Kenya, mm -hmm. right? His aim point you know from a distance they all look the same but it was actually made by six hour you know and that's you know six hour you know they're winning a lot of contracts six hour that's like a i mean that's like a 300 hundred dollar optic that's it i mean aim, micro aim points almost 700 bucks yeah so i don't know if like they that's what they're issued now or he was just like a freebie or he got it himself and he's using it so you never know you know because there's really not a lot of photos to tell mm -hmm. but for hmm. the most part i believe they're all using the micro aim point or some type of ACOG, and then you see a lot of people going to the one by six, one by eights uh, optics. Cool. What about sidearm? Uh, sidearms, of course, a Glock 19, probably with extended magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, some type of combat battle belt. Like our, all, all of those figures have a battle belt. You know, they got the medic pouches on it, some mag pouches on it. Um, you know, some more like pistol pouches, admin pouches. It's got his chem lights hanging off of it, you know, I mean, for markings, you know, like for, for us, like green chem lights were used to clear rooms. Right. Right. And then uh, what we would do if green chem light was put in a doorway once it was cleared, but once you back cleared and you knew that it was like, once you did your site exploitation, everything was good, that chem light was right. placed in the middle of the room and that way it was known everybody was clear. And then red, I think we used it for, dead space and, and um, blue was like for uh, maybe casual collection points. It all varied. It all differs per unit. Yeah. But, you know, I'm just an infantry guy. So, I mean, that's what we did. <laughs> yeah. What do you I'm, know? I'm not right? Scuba Steve. Yeah, I'm not Scuba <laughs> Steve or Delta Dan. I'm just a regular infantry dude. <laughs> How funny. What's Thor, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, we're having fun doing it. And yeah, yeah. We're not going to hit all the marks. We're going to miss something. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It, but uh, we're having fun trying. So uh, let's see. Boots. Oh, boots. Okay. So all our guys, when we initially did these, these are all the Solomon GTXs. Mm -hmm. Now, some guy may rock some Merrells or whatever, but, you know, at that scale, we pick one boot that says, okay, that's uh, that looks about right, and we got with it with that. Right. Okay. So we talked about the figures themselves. What is the coolest ode that you wanted to do on these set of figures oh it is the royal marine commando you know when these most sbs guys are from the royal marine commandos you know most of them you know and they get you most of them buy you know go buy that expensive sykes fairbank commando knife you know uh from hopefully they get it from paul mcdonald uh which i call them and that is a four to five year wait for a civilian to get one of those handcrafted knives units deploying um can get it quicker so they're probably getting them through sheffield that would be like buying a k-bar here you know mass produce yep. sheffield produces one for about 120 bucks and i'm going to get one but that was my you know all our guys got the sykes fair bay knife now would they all have one probably not but our guys are having them damn it yeah that's what we got they're all got I, them. i have one from world war ii i would like to get a modern one so let me know when you uh, place that order so. Okay, I will. So I'm ordering one through Sheffield. It's uh, 100 pounds right now. No, 75 pounds. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I think, well, you talked about the back panels. We spent some time working on the back panels and making sure those were those look good. Yeah, those are by Emerson. They make those. Yeah. A lot of the, the guys, the SES guys that you saw running around and um, where is it? Manchester, they had those on the backpacks, yeah. on their back of their body arm. Uh, so it was interesting when I first started posting pictures of the figures. Oh yeah. People were asking, you know, what about, you know, they, they, they thought it was really cool. And then they said, man, we can use these for zombie apocalypse games. Uh, we could use them for private security. And yes, I mean, again, don't get, don't get trapped in the marketing term. One, one of the things I love is first of all, I love Sarissa models and Sarissa uh, who makes MDF buildings and terrain, they will post a picture of a, of a building and they'll say, you know, this is for uh, 19th century. However, this could be used for this period, this period, this are uh, this genre. 
and it's it, it gives me the mental uh, permission to say, right, I can actually use this in a different different setting. So don't feel locked in that this is going to be just SBS. Now, doesn't mean that we're not doing other figures that we're planning on doing for units that are in Syria. Uh, so that's going to be coming out a couple months. Or anywhere. Or anywhere. Or anywhere. Could be or anywhere. Because could be. Africa. I was going to say, it could be in Africa. Africa's getting crazy. Right. Ukraine is crazy. Yep. 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 Or Mexico. You know, so... Uh, Awesome. I think we covered the pack pretty well. Uh, man, we've been talking for a bit here. Yeah, this pack, is, I'm the most proud of these figures out of all the ones that we've been able to team up to do. You know, we did, haven't talked about the dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Comes with the dog. Actually, I mean, it comes with the troop boss with the optional heads and a dog that goes great with the guys running. Yep. So people had asked, what's that uh, device that's on the back of the... the, it's, the, a the it's a camera. It's a camera. It's a camera. A lot of people don't use it because it's heavy, you know, and it kind of weighs down on the doggy's back. Yeah. You know, it's that Belgium Shepherd type dog they use. Yeah. Um, about a $20,000 dog, but yeah. Right. But that's what I it have, is. Camera. I have two. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and if you don't like the camera... Cut it off. off. Cut that's it off. Right. File it down. That's right. Simple. There you go. Yeah, if you need a tutorial on that, my God, we'll do that too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, as part of Footsore Vox, both, this is going to be posted in YouTube as far as a video goes, of course, as well as going to be uploaded to the podcast so people can also just listen to it in their cars. So we talk a lot about uh, what we're doing, and we also are very open to what you guys, you gamers, are interested in, in seeing are your topics. So... Uh, please feel free to uh, post questions in the Footsore Box Facebook group, and uh, we read them, and we'll do our best to to answer them. Yeah, so, tell us what you want. Right. Yeah, that's the challenge now. That's it the is. challenge for us. Uh, we, yeah, we definitely do have operators, friends of ours that are, are active right now. We've got ideas uh, where we could go. But as gamers, what are you wanting? You know? A lot of the things have already been done over and over and over again. Um, and that's the challenge in the, in the modern area, which lends to a, a super secret squirrel project that we're working on that will be debuted in the beginning of next year. So uh, I'm very excited about that. And more, more to come. We'll be building up that, that fun uh, news and topic later on in the, in the year. So, Glenn, where are you working on this weekend? I started last night. I'm doing um, the Space Marine Raptor chapter. Part okay. of the Raven Guard. I'm doing those. Cool. And the new Shadow Spear box. I'm painting yep. that. And I'm probably going to work on those just about this weekend. And then when you send me the Vietnam figures, I'll be painting those up. Cool. Cool. Uh, let's see. What am I working on? Well, a buddy of mine, Jay Wiley, is coming over. And we are going to be doing some playing, and we'll see oh, what happens. Get a game in. Yep, yep. So looking forward to that. Uh, I am personally for my own mental candy right now. I'm painting Pony Wars figures, Calvary Men, and, and Dismount. Oh, oh, I love it. Well, it's great because I uh, I use Zenithal priming with my airbrush. I use the Badger Steinal Res priming, and uh, I use contrast paint in a lot of in a lot of ways. In a lot of cases, diluted a little bit, and which which uh, doesn't have that coffee staining effect. Yeah, stuff paints up really quick. So yeah, I've been uh, using that contrast paint a lot, and I'm doing it in all different ways. Sometimes I use it solid. Sometimes I mix it with the other paint. The pigment's so good in it; it's smooth. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it, but I've used it in totally non-traditional ways. Yeah, and I, uh, I've i been using it as far as shading as well at times. So, And I use this, I used that on the um, uh, Raptor figures. So it works great. It works great. I have nothing else for this segment. If you got nothing else, then I think we're good to go. So yeah. thank you all for taking the time to watch. Thank you for taking the time to listen on your podcast. Please let everyone know, let all the gamers know about Footsore 
let everyone know about the podcast Foot Sore Vox. If you want to uh, contact me, I'm on Facebook. My name is Tim Spakowski. You can also email me at tim at footsoreminiatures.co.uk. If you just have put up the title, podcast ideas or questions, just put it on there and just jot away. There's no at all, no stupid questions. Uh, we're just gamers like yourselves, and we're just trying to uh, make a dent in the community and offer really cool things. So, Yeah, and I'm uh, up on Facebook too. So that's, that's uh, right. Glenn Capheim, G-L-E-N-N, last name Capheim, K-A-P-H-E-I-M. And uh, you can hit me up on Facebook or my email, grcapheim at hotmail.com. Yeah, and Glenn is an admin in the Footsore Modern group. So, you know, when we post there, uh, and he should be posting stuff, and he does. So if you guys want to direct questions in that group as well, feel free. So, I have nothing else. Thank you again for listening and taking time to uh, watch us. And I look forward, we look forward to making more videos and podcasts like this. Have a good day. Bye.